I think what we're dealing with here is a the culture base, and we're going to lay political terms of political ideology, is uh, people's life expectancy being reduced. And I think that's, that's, you know, that's a major indicator uh, of health we use to describe life in the developing world. Uh, we look at some issues out there. We, we shouldn't lose sight of it now. And it can take uh, as much as eight months, as little as eight months, or as much as 11 years of anyone that's affected by, by, the, by the impact. Now, I've also got personal interest living up the London Road um, for the last 15 years. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's had a, a more well, well, key hotspots in central London. I'm sure it's had an impact uh, on, 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 on me personally. But there are particular groups that are affected by uh, the poor air quality. Um, for example, uh, young people on the development of their lungs. Um, I, I won't go into it too much, we've got scientists here who really know more about it, but I think that's a particularly pertinent question given how close uh, a lot of schools, particularly primary schools, are to the major uh, roads of London. So I think that's, that's where I think uh, we, should, we shouldn't lose sight of it. Sometimes this area can get very technical for very obvious reasons. Uh, there's a, an intricate science that we need to convey it to the public. And I think there are ways of doing that and doing it well and making sure that people can grapple with it. The unfortunate thing is, in some ways, when you compare it against road fatalities, road fatalities are obviously very subtle, whereas uh, the fatalities from poor air quality are, are, are a lot more gradual, obviously. But nonetheless, it's, uh, I think we need to put that in the public domain that has a range of It certainly has got worse. And that's not putting the blame at any particular point, I guess we've got better informed about the impact it's having on, on our citizens. Um, I should also um, um, report back that we, we, uh, one of the first meetings of the new Health and Environment Committee uh, this month was on poor air quality. And we had people like Simon uh, there as part of the expert witnesses. And we also had um, started the meeting with a, um, a very well-informed briefing note from uh, King's College uh, about uh, the, uh, the monitoring they've done over the 100 monitoring stations over 2011. And uh, the, the new figures actually were revealing um, that they, they, re uh, they, they uh, suggested that uh, the limits for harmful air pollution were being breached across the capital. Um, and um, the, the EU limits were breached at most uh, at the monitoring sites uh, at, at busy roads. A particular concern was the uh, nitro, uh, nitro, nitro dioxide breaches at the majority of the sites and locations, um, particularly in central London, and there were five further locations further away, uh, particularly in Brixton and Putney. Uh, with PM10s, um, there were particular problems uh, uh, over the uh, limits set by the EU in two curb sides and three road sides, as well as one particular industrial site. So I think what that showed to us is that this is clearly uh, still um, uh, very much a live issue in London, and it's more, more widespread than I think we take for granted. Now I know, you know the main hotspot is central London, um, and I think, interestingly enough, in central London, there, there, there's a bit of a consensus. Uh, there's an interesting bit of correspondence which I've seen uh, between the, um, uh, two, two, two local authorities, one Labour controlled, Camden, the other Tory controlled, the city of Westminster, bang, a bang smack in the middle of, uh, of central London, along with the city of London Corporation, representing business, business which have come. Have come, uh, which have approached the mill with a number of proposals to tackle nitrogen dioxide pollution, PM10s, and also uh, future problems with PM2.5s and black carbon. Um, and in, uh, in essence, what they're, what they're, they're suggesting is, uh, is a number of things. Uh, with the bus fleet, um, they've got, they do want TFL to look at the loading of particular bus routes and how they operate with the new filters and maybe that could be uh, done a lot better in uh, mindful of air pollution hotspots in particular. Um, on with taxis, they, they, do, they want to see the, uh, the, the life of a taxi reduced from 15 years to 10 years. I think there's actually good evidence to suggest, uh, to show that actually cabbies change their cars every seven and a half years anyway. 
Um, and finally, they were, they were arguing for a, a, a fifth phase of the low emission zone to particularly deal with future problems for uh, PM 2.5s, smaller particles which can go further down the lines uh, than, 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 the, than the PM 10s, as well as black carbon. And I, I, I think that's actually uh, an amazing achievement. It's all credit to those local authorities. And I just hope that the mayor does see fit to sign up to it and, and push, uh, push those uh, uh, issues um, as, as they re recommended and clearly in, in, in his plans to be able to do that. Um, but like I said, this is not just a problem in central London, it's also a problem in, in the suburbs and let's not forget Heathrow Airport. And if you look at the, uh, the suburbs, there's one or two particular places that keep popping up. Uh, Putney, for example, at the beginning of the year, a particular problem with nitro dioxide. Um, and it came up in, in the King's uh, monitoring reports in 2011. Um, and interestingly, like, it has become an issue there. That during the last uh, um, um, GLA election campaign, there were public meetings on that very issue. Now, there are very often very particular circumstances. I think Putney, the Putney one has a lot to do with bus garage there. But nonetheless, it does show that it, it's, it's an issue and that the solution is dealing with the bus. Bus is probably there. Um, the interesting thing, uh, place that was highlighted, which hadn't come up on my radar at all, was Brixton in, in, in the King's report for 2011. Now, I've got no idea what, 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 what the particular issues there, but I do know that it does have a lot of heavy traffic coming in from the suburbs of South London into central London. So, by and large, it would be traffic the road traffic that's causing that. But there are other places in the suburbs which have kind of been highlighted uh, as well, um, which I've noted. There's Neeston Lane, uh, there's Acton Lane, and they're to do probably with uh, being near to industrial sites, but nonetheless they are places that we have to, uh, to, 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 to help reduce the poor air quality for local residents and nothing else. And I do think that those two areas have been probably um, not helped by, by the North Circular Road. Um, and that's, that shows how key I think road traffic is in, in, in dealing with uh, the air quality we've got in London. And then we've got Heathrow. Now that's something, Andrew, uh, you, you alluded to, but the previous Environment Committee at the beginning of the year did look into. And, um, you know, one, one of the myths you're going to come across, or if you haven't already, uh, is that Heathrow isn't expanding. Well, can I, can I suggest to you, don't listen to the BAA propaganda. Heathrow will be expanded, and it won't be by uh, numbers of pl planes, maybe, but certainly by passenger numbers. They've got planning permission in all the terminals uh, to deal with 10 million extra passengers at this moment in time. Um, and the, the reality is, planes are getting bigger. That's how the, 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 the slots they've got are getting bigger planes. Um, you might, if you're wondering, well, what's the air quality impact of that? Well, it's actually not the planes itself, but it's the road traffic that it attracts. Um, there's no doubt most of that 10, uh, extra 10 million passengers are probably uh, going to well, pro probably going to come to Heathrow by car, and it's it's, it's an incredibly busy hub anyway. It's going to get busier, um, and the uh, that's the reason why Heathrow under BAA are, do not see themselves ever get on, getting on top of the nitro oxide emissions around the airport until 2020. I think. Last time, last time I heard. Um, now, that's, uh, that, that's becoming increasingly a, a local environmental issue along with noise. When you talk about Heathrow expansion, I think most of the focus tends to be on climate change impact, and I've got no problems with that, but let's not forget what it means for local residents. And it's usually the noise from the planes. But the, the, the air, poor air quality is much of the issue now as, as the noise. I think that is that's something the campaigners, I'm sure, like Jenny will realise that increasingly have got to combine the local environmental issues with, with the more global ones. So, you know, the, the air quality uh, issue is not just a central London issue, there's a suburban one and, and some one around Deep Airport. Interesting that there were some, uh, some, some, uh, some new statistics produced by the BBC, and I'm still trying to get them to confirm how they got to those figures the methodology, they suggested there was actually about 2,000 additional puncture deaths as a result of uh, admissions from Heathrow. Now, I, I've not been totally convinced of that. I have asked them, and I've asked um, 
Gary at uh, King's College had a look at that because scientists can uh, certify that, I'll be happy, happy to use it. But I think in the, in the English court doesn't have to use it because I suspect you, you, you'll have a, a sceptical mind like myself before, before you, you, you use it yourself. But there are particular problems around Heathrow and uh, the suburb particularly can now increasingly come up as well as the central London hotspots. Um, if I'm just, uh, if, if I'm going to end, uh, I've just got a few thoughts for the mayor, um, essentially. He's uh, not here today, by the way. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but the cameras are here, so well, well, who knows? He may, he may, he may be. Hopefully, he's not too busy during the Olympic period to, to keep an eye on this issue. It wasn't actually a, a major issue on his manifesto. It wasn't there at all. I don't remember the last time I read it. But he has, uh, he, he is actually uh, putting together a 2020 vision. Um, and if there's one public health issue that I think he can make a difference and make a huge impact through his chairing of um, Transport London, his new health responsibilities is this. Um, there's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, he should, I think, l look at the, uh, what the, the Central London uh, local authorities have put up to and, and sign up to that as soon as possible. Uh, it should also look at the recommendations that have been made by the House of Commons Environmental Audit Committee on the public information on this issue. I think that there's a lot of work yet to be done on that front to make people publicly aware. Interestingly enough, I think there are lessons for us to learn from other parts of the world. But I think um, all credit to the House of Commons and raise that issue. I know Queen's College uh, are working on some of that. It's, it's, it's kind of basic things <coughs> like, you know, putting the information out of mobile, indicators on streets and roads. There's a lot of that that could be done and should be done and should be, uh, should, should, should be part of the, the landscape, the street landscape that we operate in when we move in and out of our cities and towns. And finally, I hope you take seriously the recommendations we make from the Health and Environment Committee. I think some of the ones around Heathrow um, are particular that we made at the beginning of the year. And there will be recommendations coming out of our recent scrutiny into poor air quality uh, in, in London. Uh, for example, there's clearly the issue of diesel cars is something we need to get on top of, and hasn't been we haven't really accounted for the, the, the extent to which car drivers are shifted into diesel uh, cars rather than with petrol combustion engines. Um, the, the fact that, that some of the assumptions we made for Euro 4 and 5 uh, performance haven't actually materialised, and, and I think Simon will, will agree there. Um, and, um, and, 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 yeah, and also the, the, the reality that he, he will have these new public health responsibilities, um, and I think the best way to tackle the, air quality, the poor air quality in London is to incorporate that within those responsibilities in the public health and wellbeing rules which are going to be set up across London through local authorities and I think it's got a particular role in the panel on the one. So I, I just hope those thoughts are useful and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say I've been very London centric for obvious reasons um, and I know you know nationally it's an issue as much as in, in London. Um, we've had, uh, we, we've, uh, the EU have rightly had uh, a, a, a told the, the government that the, uh, they haven't accepted their um, extensions of times on reaching the uh, nitro oxide limits. Uh, and I'm sure we've got things to learn from not just mainland Europe and other parts of the world, but from other parts of the country. So I hope those thoughts are useful and I look forward to the rest of the day. Thank you, Mike.